assessment and generic practice. As a brief outline of what my presentation will look like, I'll start with the introduction. I'll look at the concept of risk in engineering, the definition of risk assessment, an overview of risk assessment process, organizational perspectives, benefits and opportunities associated with the conduct of risk assessment, the challenges involved in risk assessment, a summary of the presentation, and I'll give a conclusion. Well, as we all know, engineering practice involves the application of the principles of physical and social sciences to the design, development, and implementation of policies, programs, and projects, which of course have various implications in various social communities. Engineering practice is very complex in structure and nature. It is fickle, that is, it is subject to change, owing to innovations every now and then, new trends, and of course, technological advancements. This makes engineering practice unpredictable, volatile, and fraught with risks. Thus, the need for risk assessment in engineering practice. Many professional bodies, such as the Project Management Institute in the United States of America, the Royal Academy of Engineering here in the UK, have identified risk assessment as a specialized process embedded in good management framework. But much more than that, risk assessment is an iterative process. That is, it is a continuous process that must be carried out in every engineering function. And this makes it a vital routine in engineering practice. But primarily what risk assessment does in engineering is that it measures and assigns values to the variables that revolve around <coughs> engineering risks. And that brings us to the crucial question, what are engineering risks? Without a doubt, engineering risks arise as a result of uncertainties. Uncertainties due to the fact that engineers don't know what failures will likely occur, why the failures will occur, when the failures will occur, where the failures will occur, and how the failures will occur in the design, development, and implementation of programs, policies, and projects, of course, in engineering practice. And these uncertainties present the probabilistic nature of engineering risks, which are represented mathematically there. How in the formula is the risk associated with event I, where P and C are the probability and the consequence of event I occurring. And also another good point to note is that these uncertainties always come up as a result of constraints in five key factors that are always inherent in engineering practice. And if you look at the slide, here is a conceptual diagram, though it looks like a graph, it's not one. These are the key factors. You have the cost, could be the cost of the project or the cost of the policy. The period, could be the period of the program, the period of the project. You have quality, you have security, and you have the environment. Here is a small pentagon that revolves around these factors. Here is a big one that shows a development state in the state of the program, project, policy, whatever it may be. And this shaded portion points to the risk status area. That is, for this project, if it's a project now to move from this point to this point, and to move from this point to this point, it must cover this area of risk. It's a very simple diagram, and I believe it is self-explanatory. Looking at the definition of risk assessment now, of course, Wikipedia gives a very simple view of it, which is the measure and value of risk related to an existing situation and a known threat. But looking at it from an engineering balance and giving it a more technical definition, you will all agree with me that risk assessment involves a comprehensive and intensive study of risks in which uncertainties, assumptions are identified, defined, considered, and presented in their qualitative, semi-quantitative, and quantitative measures to foster informed decision making. Please note this because this is the main point in risk assessment, informed decision making. This is an overview of the risk assessment process. Remember the topic is the role of risk assessment. So I'm just going to speak on this briefly just to give us an insight into what risk assessment is all about. But this is not the main point in this presentation. For you to conduct a proper risk assessment, you must have a description of the risk you are going to be looking at. That's like a scope creating the broad boundaries of the risks you want to look at. Within the scope, you will identify the key risks. And after identifying the risks, you will draw up estimations, which are also known as approximations. And within the approximations, you carry out critical analysis, which is the evaluation of the risk 
And after the critical analysis, you should come up with what is called a risk response plan, whether you are going to avoid, transfer, share, or accept the risk, depending on the nature of the risk. But one very important thing to note in this process is the review stage, because it is at this point that decisions are made based on the risk response plan. If your decision is a goal, you can go ahead to implement the plan, but if it is not good enough, you just have to go back. And I stated it earlier on that risk assessment, it's an iterative process. It's ongoing in the engineering function. Organizational perspectives. At the risk of repetition, engineering practice is very complex. If you've been opportune to be to an engineering industry and you've seen the organizational chart, you see that there are a lot of functions, positions, roles, responsibilities, and description of work also. But what risk assessment does is that all these functions are viewed in four clear perspectives that cuts across all forms of engineering practice. And these perspectives are the policy perspective, which points to strategic development, the standards and regulations, the code of conduct within the organization, and of course, the overall vitality of the business. You have the program perspective, which somewhat points to portfolio management. This looks at several related projects that are concatenated together for ease of management. Then the project perspective, which points to specific tasks and assignments and specific deliverables within a limited time, of course. And the operational perspective, that is the day-to-day -day running of the organization. Also, it is good to know that this perspective all have their associated level of risk, which are interdependent and interrelated. This diagram, of, if you look at it, it is very explanatory. It shows that the risk in the project perspective are related to the risks in the operational perspective, the program perspective, and the policy perspective. And this goes for all the perspectives. The benefits and opportunities associated with the conduct of risk assessment. The very simple one is that risk assessment, when it is done correctly, it decreases the measure of risks within the organization. And also, risk assessment makes use of past record, which is historical information and real-time information. And you will agree with me that a juxtaposition of real-time information and historical information will always reflect the status quo of an organization objectively. PwC is a big firm in the UK here, and they stated it clearly that risk assessment, when carried out efficiently, monitors and measures an organization's ability to achieve its objective. And this holds to be true. Definitely, it creates a basis for improvement. But most importantly, like I've said it in the definition of risk assessment, risk assessment provides a clear guidance to every engineering organization in making informed decisions. This is a graph of risk assessment investment against risk strengths and losses. You see that as the investment, risk assessment investment increases, the risk status area in terms of it reduces. And how see who here is the minimum assessment, risk assessment investment that every organization must have so that the risks will remain within the manageable boundaries, which are LK minus and LK plus, because outside this boundary to be very difficult to manage the risk. I've made the draft to be as simple as possible and I believe it is clear enough. The challenges. One of the major challenges in the conduct of risk assessment in engineering practice, of course, is lack of expertise. There are very few professionals in the field of risk and reliability engineering and in the field of risk management. Another challenge is bureaucracy, which varies from organization to organization. The do's and don'ts, the values and the retapism. Risk assessment involves use of so much data. And depending on the organization, there are several restrictions to data. So access to data are also restrictions to data access also serves as another challenge. The limitation of risk and risk assessment to functional silos within the organization is also a challenge because most organizations feel that risk assessment should be within the financial department of the organization. And that is not true. That is not true. It should cut across all departments, all units of the organization to make it very holistic. In summary, risk assessment plays a vital and definitive role in engineering practice. 
It is needed for strategic planning and development, for objective setting and implementation, for good management practice. You have enterprise management, which comes from the policy perspective, the portfolio management, which comes from the program perspective, the project management, which comes from the project perspective of the organization, and the business continuity management, which comes from the operational perspective of the organization. In conclusion, I would say that a more holistic and definitive role still needs to be given to risk assessment in every functional and executive hands of every goal-driven organization. Thank you. Any questions, please? Right, any questions from the floor? <clears throat> right. Got a uh, firstly, do you see um, risk management as being specialist in a large organization is a specialist function of a specialist department. No, no risk assessment. No. Risk assessment. Yes. It's a specialist function. Yes. Or should it be embedded in all the roles, like project management and so forth? It's a specialized function that should be embedded. Right. In all managerial roles. In all managed, right. Yes. Right. Yes. Do, do you see, um, I mean, certain branches of engineering have classically had lots of problems with um, bad planning and Massive, particularly a financial overrun, which is a big part of risk. Yes, yes. Uh, do you see the techniques as being equally apl applicable across all branches of engineering? Somewhat it is. Yeah. Somewhat it is. Because looking at the financial aspect, like you made mention of, risk assessment needs to be done yeah. in the financial aspect of it. And that's why you have what's called the enterprise risk management framework which is developed by the, the community of sponsoring organizations of the Tradeway Commission. Because I don't know if you've heard of that, sir. No. Okay. It's a framework that can be used for that. It was developed by them. In, initially, it used to be an internal framework just for some departments yeah. in the organization. But now it's an enterprise risk management framework that cuts across the whole units within the organization. It's mm -hmm. a very huge deal now. I mean, w one thing that sort of raised my question is we, we, we have a we have had a problem in this country and I guess in most other countries okay of certain very substantial software engineering uh, okay. projects which have had massive overruns okay. massive uh, over cost okay in terms of finance no? yes and I just wondered if, if, if the techniques you're talking about for general engineering are also equally applicable yes it in, is in that sort of it way. is it is okay any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.